Hi, I'm Ash from Britland Social Club. Hi, I'm Rob from the MYH podcast. And on this episode, we've got Matt from D5 Construction. Or, or your jobs and things like that, because let's be honest, none of us are love sitting behind the desk, do we? We would all rather be out laying brick or doing something on site rather than being stuck behind the desk. So if you can get a nice area that makes you comfortable and want, you want to work, then it, it's better, isn't it? Well, I did a video the other day, a reel, and all my reels are obviously brick line based and that yeah. brick line series that I'm doing is r- real good at the minute. But I did one, a basic one, which I've had a big response from, was the best tip I ever received was uh, get yourself a workspace separate from your living space. Yeah. And I always worked, you know, with the kids and everything. I was always at the kitchen table or when I could do certain stuff. Now, I brought a desk. Uh, I created a space in a room that we never use in the house. Uh, I set again all my boards that I use, everything here now. And you know what? It, it honestly changes the whole, you know, aspect of quoting for me. I know, like, I can go from my front room that I live in and then I come over to the back room. I know it's work. I've got everything where I need it. Uh, I can quote properly. It's peaceful. I've got natural daylight here. And it's just literally been it's been more productive for me. My jobs have gone, I've been able to quote them better. I've been able to go through things, organise, program. And my program's key for me. I've got my programs on the wall. It's just honestly, it's made mentally as well for me. It's made my life a whole lot easier with work. It's like a weight, a little bit of a weight off my shoulders. And Matt, where, where did you where did you learn to organise yourself in that way? Like, so, was there someone that, someone that taught you? or So... When I, when I was 16, I went to a bit of background, so you can a lot of people don't quite see where I come from. When I was 16, I went to Brick Lane College to do an MVQ, and I was really lucky because a family member, which was my uncle at the time, owned a reputable Brick Lane contracting company. And he kind of said to me and my cousin, uh, do your apprenticeship and you can come and do it through us. Uh, so that's what we did. We did it for, you know, the three years. Uh, and we were lucky enough that there's a lot of great bricklayers there, a lot of good bricklayers, not like, you know, the house bashers and whatnot, actual good bricklayers that we could learn from. Uh, and from there, I was there, God, I was within 10 years, 12 years. We had some of the best jobs in Birmingham. We had like, you know, hospitals, uh, health centres, uh, libraries, you name it. We had some of the biggest things that we, we worked on with the biggest companies at the time as well. Uh, and then as I got older, and obviously I had kids at a younger age, uh, I went off to explore doing different things myself and then ended up working for a company which uh, I was the bricklayer, builder, stroke site manager. Then I ended up taking a lot more of a prominent role as managing, which I think I was, if I've been honest right now at that age, I was a bit over my head. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't really capable of doing it. Uh, but then I got offered a job with a friend of mine, a massive organisation, uh, multi-million pound company. Uh, and I was with them for three years. And their level of management, like, you know, collaborative plans, the cost of completes, the pre-contract meetings, the pre-start meetings. Like, you couldn't pick your nose on the site without a permit. That's the level it was at. Like, your CP was every morning. Uh, you'd be in rooms full of boards with each day itemised for the next 16 months. And I learned a lot there. I learned how to manage, how to programme properly, not just like Microsoft Project and you do a programme, actually how to programme, how to scale, how to, you know, how to do everything from start to finish. Like people, some, how many companies now at my level, small, uh, are reactive, they'll win a job, They'll kind of put a little program together and they'll go and deal with it. If only in their mind, this is how we're going to do it. If they ever have a problem, they're reactive and then they're firefighting from then on. Uh, you know, I learned how to, they taught me how to program. I learned how to, and these were programming, you know, jobs worth millions and millions. But obviously the jobs I'm doing now are, are millions and millions. But to learn all of that and then to put that level of management into a company this small on jobs this small, it's kind of, Plain sight. Not I shouldn't say plain sight because it's hard work. No one says it's hard work. But if you do the planning, you do the prepping, and you get everything nailed down. Like if there's people don't sometimes understand. Oh, if you need like a special lantern or windows or something, there may be a twelve week lead time. So if you're starting a job, you need to order them at the start of the job to make sure they're here for the time period that they're due on the job. 
Uh, a lot of people don't get that. They just kind of get the job and go, right, let's, let's do it and let's ring these people. But that company for me, uh, was, they taught me, it taught me everything, like in the people around me. I, I'm, I'm a prime. I love learning off other people. I'm like a sponge. If there's some, I'm a bricklayer. That's what I am. I'm a bricklayer. And I like to think I'm a decent bricklayer. But when it comes to all the other stuff, I, I'm still learning as I go. It's if I find that's why I always listen to podcasts and I'm watching things till God knows what time in the morning. I want to learn off the best people of of their specialities. If I want to learn something, I'll, I'll go and listen to them. Yeah, that's it. If if you surround yourself with people that can give you that knowledge, it it just benefits you. It's only like apprentices coming into the industry now and learning off people like yourself, Matt, that they, they need to get in with the right gangs and the right companies and the right people because they will teach them and then they can take you forward with it all. I, I think that's a big problem. But for me, I think that's, it, sad, it saddens me sometimes because I had this conversation the other day and I said, Brick Lane, it, it's such an absolute, like for me, it's one of the, it's one of the best trades. To so say you're a Brick Lane, like it was never... You know, back back originally, you know, in the, uh, in the old days before we were ever here, it was, you know, used to wear suits and ties to work. They were, they were real, they were, they were the guys like, you know, brick lads. And then it kind of fell off uh, when, it, you know, the big boom and everything happened. And, and then all the price increases and everyone was going, we could do more for less. The quality was dropping uh, and everyone was just out for the money. I remember when I was in college and it was, uh, everyone was just dying to get their MVQ too, to go out and earn money rather than stay on to do their three and learn a little bit more. And everyone's just out to, to, to get a book now. It's, it's, it's crazy. And the young kids now, like, let's be honest, when I was an apprentice, if we did to the apprentices now what happened to us as apprentices, we'd be locked up. Straight up, we'd be locked up. Yeah, I would, would yeah. Honestly, I remember being 16 years old and I remember two of them like cable tying me to a scaffold pole with each arm like this for about two hours and, and like, they didn't let me move. Like, imagine trying, you know, imagine trying, and it was minus two. Imagine trying to do that now. It was, you know, it, it, there's kids today, they come on site and you, you tell them to, true story this is, God, I'm not going to name the kid. This kid got sent out to us and he said, uh, he's coming to labour. Okay, yeah, I'm going to labour. I'm, I'm, I know this, I know that. I said, right, the mixer's there. I'm already loaded out here with blocks. Uh, four and one, just fill the mixer up, get me going, get it out here, and then we'll go from there. Sound. It was about 30 degrees. It was hot summer. It was real gruelling. Uh, I'm thinking, where's his compo? Where, where, where is it? I don't know where it's gone. I said, I think I said, I said, where is it? And I went round. And as I go around the corner, no word of a lie, he was stood there with the shovel in his hand. He'd filled the mixer up with sand and cement, as I told him. No water and it wasn't turned on. But I didn't know what I didn't know what I didn't know what to say. I didn't I genuinely didn't know what to say. I thought I just said you're gonna have to go. Like without saying disrespectful, you're losing good men here, Mona. Yeah, yeah, it, it just goes. And I think that's another thing that people think it is easy, but it's not. Even a good labourer can can make or break a gang as well. And I think I think that they're underappreciated because the term labourer, yeah. uh, a lot of people don't say, oh, I'm a labourer, I'm a labourer. But it's not, labourer isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And Bricklayers at my level go hand in hand with us there. So my main labourer, and I'm saying labourer, he's a he's a multi skilled guy. Uh, he's he's a bricklayer. He can point up. He can do groundworks. He can do he can he can do everything. But his sole focus, he earns his money by doing the bits around us that we can get done, but also keeping me going to earn the bulk of the money. Uh, but yeah, I think they go. Some people go. Oh, we can get into labour. Like you can get anyone to labour. You can't just get anyone to labour. You need someone who is experienced. I know what they're doing. Like I could send, I could send mine to go and basically I'll say oh, we need that loaded out over there. I could give him the drawing. He'll go and work out how many bricks are in it, how many blocks are in it, what's in there. He'll get the toys over there ready. Get all the trays over there ready. The exact links with the right codes on. He'll get everything set up there before you even get there. How many people can you say? You know can do that really unless you teach them but i just think kids these days like we have them coming out going oh i thought i was gonna lay bricks i thought i thought i was gonna show me how to lay bricks i thought it just doesn't work that way 
Oh, you don't just come on site and you start to lay bricks. You've got to learn properly. You've got to labour. You've got to learn how to load blocks in the cold. You've got to learn spacing. You've got to learn how to mix compo. I don't think any bricklayer, any kid should be allowed to lay a brick until they can mix properly and load properly. Yeah, you're right there. I think I think going back to college, it's one one thing um, that they don't teach you is because I'm, they don't teach you how to bump out. They don't teach you how to make your muck. Um, they don't teach you the spacings between your, your blocks, uh, your bricks um, and your spot board, um, however you're doing it. Uh, there's a variety of things that you don't get taught how, even like just wetting your spot board down I don't yeah. remember any I don't think anyone told me at college it wasn't until I went on site um, and the labourer come down and I was just too eager and I picked up some muck and I chucked it on the board and then I started trying to lay and he just looked at me and says your muck's drying it and I went yeah so well, you didn't wet your board did you I went well, what would you, you wet a board for the muck's wet yeah. um, <laughs> and then uh yeah, but I learned that when I was I learned the hard way when I was sixteen. <laughs> Board comes, flips it over, knocks all the bricks off, and says, "Well, they're not going to bond properly because your muck's dry, your bricks are dry. It's not going to work." And then you just you, you just learn. But these these problems don't get taught. And uh, if you if you're going in with a price gang or not the right builder, he's not going to teach her. And, and you know what? That's a, that's a prime reason. Obviously, everyone's got their own what they do. So, so I'm a small company. I started doing uh, a lot of social things for business, but it's turned into a big community on there, especially Instagram for me. It's been amazing. Uh, so I made some good friends on there. But I started doing the amount of messages that I get. I could wake up to some days to like 40, 50 requested messages. Uh, and they, they basically sit around. They're not, you know, 1% of them. Uh, work they want, want me to do some work the rest of them are around the, the brick tips for beginners and I've got people messaging me saying you know all the way from the USA from New Zealand from a uh, guy from Cambodia message me uh, these guys are saying that these videos are so they're brilliant for, for us now they're not for like us guys they're not for people who who are doing it day and day in the brick layers they're for like a lot more I've got a I've got a twelve-year-old daughter who's like got on the autism spectrum and things like that, and it's like my videos are for they're that simple and they're that basic. They're not to teach you how to go and be a bricklayer. They're teaching you basic skills of what our job is about. So it's for like a ten-year-old autistic kid if he wants to go and do something in his garden. It's for a sixty-two-year-old pensioner in his garden, a DIYer. There's that many. It's, it's for that many people. They're that basic. It just shows how many basic, you know, skills to do certain things that we do that other people can learn once they're shown. Now, you know, I don't want paying for it. I don't want anything. It's something we know that we can show someone else. And if you can help someone else do something better, then yeah, that's the most, you know, gratification that I can have that these people now are going to try and do something in the back garden or down the road or with their mates because they've seen it on my page. Like, how many, there's yeah. too many people that are out there for clout. And how many people do you see now? Seriously. And Rob. On Instagram now, it's kind of like uh, a merry-go-round of it's like a circus. There's there's so many people on there that are genuine and th th you know they're doing it for the right reasons. But there's so many people that just use it and like, try and jump onto what other people are doing and 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 not do it for the right reasons. Do you know what I mean? I think people with the right intention, with the right you know morals, and doing it for the right reasons, they go a lot further, and people are willing to learn off them people. Yeah, uh, I mean, since I joined Instagram, um, I actually knew nothing about Instagram. I didn't have it. My my girlfriend used to take the piss out of me. Um, I didn't. I don't have Snapchat. I don't have TikTok. The only thing I had was Facebook. Um, but well, she used I to really take the like... piss out of you before that, anyway. <laughs> 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 all right, all right. Cheers. Um, and I was I was on Facebook, and you wasn't getting no help from anyone. If you wanted to ask a question. And you wanted a bit of help because you wasn't too sure on something. Uh, just say, uh, say you wasn't too sure on putting a cavity tray in. Something. Just yeah. say you're you're an apprentice bricklayer and you've got a private job to do and you need to put a cavity tray. You're not too sure, and you asked the question on Facebook. Oh, you God be damned! You was going to get two barrels and a, yeah. and a kick. You know what I mean? Um, and that's where I came into this was because there was and there's another there's another group. I'm not going to, it's not, it's nothing to do with me. Um, 
but he's kind of maybe got different intentions, um, what he's doing. But what we were focused on doing was trying to get people like you, Matt, Rob, um, traditional brick, like even people like Charlie Collison, Stu Compton, uh, Brian SQ2, uh, Rob Songer, all of these really great bricklayers or really good craftsmen and bringing them all together so that we have got a community where we can share it openly with no judgment. And that's what's going on right now. I, I, I think the problem you'll have with some of that is you're doing it for the right reasons. And so I won't say, but some of the people named aren't, men, aren't mentally on the same where we want to be like so you could get to to some of these guys get to a certain level of following or certain level of uh, viewing or insights uh and as soon as people start offering them money decent money like i've had loads of offers from different companies and they were saying we'll pay you x amount for a post well i'll turn i turn down a thousand pound uh for a post to a post a week for a month off a company which is a lot of money let's be realistic uh yeah because I, I don't want to do that. I don't believe in your product. I don't use your product. It's not the right thing to do. I'm not about to endorse something that I don't believe in for a thousand pounds. Whereas there are a lot of people that will do that. They'll do that. And then when you ask them to get involved in things like that, they're not going to do it because they think they're bigger than what 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 it is. And that's the difference. Like people, let's be honest, I'm, I'm good friends with Ryan. Uh, prime example, Ryan, if Ryan woke up with 10 million followers tomorrow, He'd still talk to you the next day. He'd still message you the next day. He'd still meet up if you're a beer at the weekend. There's a lot of people on here. If they woke up with a new five million followers or ten million views or whatever, they they, they, they kind of get a perception that that, that they they're worth a little bit more. You know, you're only worth what you believe. Uh, and if you if you stay doing it for the right reason, like like I said, see, I originally do it for business. Instagram for me is I do treat it as a business because. You know, the modern technology that we're in, God forbid something ever happened and I, I, and I was running out of work, it's something to fall back on. It's a, it's a lead generator. That's what I got it for. But it's turned into something else for me. It's turned into a platform now where I've learned, I've learned new things off people, off bricklayers as well. Like I've learned different things. Uh, I, do, I think you do it for, it, it's the right thing to do. And with the right people around, like you were talking about, it can be massive. It can be a massive thing for everybody. But I just still think there's people out there that are in it for a, a little bit more than what they're yeah, saying. Yeah, definitely. We've, I mean, just through through the journey of the social club, there's, and I've, I approach a lot of people, a lot of bricklayers, a lot of businesses, because I want, I want to have a piece of everyone. Because every, together we're fragmented. Um, together we then we we form something. We're all fragments, and together we we build one solid one solid uh, picture. Um, and I get I get a lot of it where people or businesses think that they are better than what we're trying to do, um, mm. and they don't, they're not interested or they just kind of like yeah whatever kind of thing. Um, there is there is quite a, a, a an infamous bricklayer which we we all know um, who's a bit like that with me, um, and then there's also another social group um, which is. In, if not exactly the same, but just a bit different. Um, and I'm, I want to work with these guys. I just want to just kind of bring it together. But they like they they just block me or ignore me. It's like, that, that, okay, well. Do you know what? Whether you pr- you may have heard a few stories or not, that's why people a lot of people don't converse with me anymore because I'll literally I, I can't. Like I said, I'm a single parent of five kids. I got a business to run. I've got a life to live. Uh, I want to do this as well with people who are also in it for the right reasons. I will out people straight away. I will say you're a div, like without my, without swearing. I'm not interested. Like you, yeah. I'll tell them if what I think of them because I'm not gonna. I can't sit in front of someone or message someone or voice note with someone or dialogue with someone if I genuinely don't like what they're doing or what they're about. And I'll say without being rude. I'm just not, I'm not a fan of you, like, I don't believe in what you do. And that's it. Like, because it, mentally for me, that makes me feel better that I've been true. I've said what I've had to say. Uh, whether you like it or not, it's no consequence to me. I haven't been rude. I've just said I don't believe in what you're doing. Don't like you, really. But it's not, it, it is what it is. I've said it to a is few people. I've, 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 I've had to... Go on. Is this where we end this now, then? <laughs> <laughs> Mate, honestly... I wouldn't have come on. I wouldn't have come on. I'd have said, but do you know what, Rob? Do you know a prime example of what I'm talking about with these people? 
with pretentious people who think they're bigger than they are. Two points to that. It's one, mental health is when people people have a mindset. Now, when you hear mental health, uh, you get kind of two reactions of people. One, you get the engager who understands mental health and has that experience with them or someone else who's had certain issues in mental health, so they get it. Or you get the other band of people that believes it's just a fad. It's a it's a it's a it's a niche, it's a niche topic that people talk about, so they need to talk about it, but they don't understand it. Now, if you've ever suffered it, and it can be of any reason, any reason, any maybe you just if it's one day you feel depressed or twenty days that you can't get out of a slump, listen. I'll make no secret of, of my uh, situation to anybody. I've been transparent with everybody. I had years and years ago, like with, with the children and, and whatnot, going through court and with the kids and what I was in a, you know, it was stressful. It was uh, anxiety. It was, it was crazy. It, well, it's not a nice thing. Uh, and me being a stubborn person, I just think I, I, I got myself out of it. I got out of it. I, I saw, I spoke to people. I, I said, you know, I'm having a rough time here. Uh, I don't know what to do. And people, I, eventually I built my, you know, my kind of immunity to it. And I kind of, I'm a headstrong guy, but now I can see how many people uh, who can't get out of it. If you're not wired up to, to get yourself out of them situations, if, you know, you're a bit more softer or whatnot. I say softer. Oh, not, like, but, oh you need a bit more support. You need more support. Like, yeah, it, I can see how people stay there for longer. But like I said, unless you've experienced it or had someone around you, then um, it, it, it's tough. You're not going to get it, I don't think, unless you're open to it. I re-downloaded it about three weeks ago, four weeks ago now, because somebody asked me to come in and listen on a marketing page. So I went back on and, and the room wasn't ready. So the room at the top was Instagram growth and Instagram growth and business. So I clicked on it to listen. There was about 100 people in there. There was four moderators. Uh, and before, before I had a chance to even listen to about a minute of it, they made me a moderator. So I, I kind of said, oh, no, sorry, I'm, I, I'm not. And they went, no, 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 we've had a look at your Instagram profile because you can yeah. click on it. And we've seen you following, we've seen your TikTok. So we thought you belong up here. And I said, listen, I don't know any of you guys. I'm not here to talk on any more. You know, I just, I'm just listening. I'm just really listening. And then people are coming on. And then some of them, you, you, you see the, that they show themselves, don't they, what they like. So what made me laugh was one of them, I made a comment, he kind of outed them, and then I left. I didn't mean to out them, but it was what it was. Uh, th- three of them on, on the, the, the moderators, had like, one had 46,000 followers, one had 50, and one had about 60-something. And I always said, I made a comment because I'd seen their Instagrams. I'd look while I was there. I said, there's no good having, it was aimed at the one. I said, it's no good having 65,000 followers as a business or as someone who's trying to teach something uh, and only getting uh, 2,000 views on all your reels or only reaching 10,000 count, uh, accounts a week. Uh, and he said, well, he said, was that aimed at me with the 65? I said, no, no disrespect. I said, you're, talking, you're, t- you're trying to teach people here how to grow their Instagram and sell a message. You've got 65,000 followers, but yet only 2,000 people are watching your reel. So that tells me you're not engaging your audience. You're not showing value. You're not teaching the right thing. And they're not coming back to watch you. I said, I've only got 16,000 followers on Instagram, but I average 10 to 50 to 100,000 because the stuff I'm, I'm trying to show people is credible to people and they want to come back and learn it again. I'm, le- I'm, te- I'm using my skill that I went to college for for three years and I've been in Brickland for 10 to 15 years and for free, for my own accord, because I want people to be able to do these things, is I'm doing, showing them for free. You guys aren't showing that message. You guys are trying to... You're focusing on the following and the clout before the message that you're giving. Your following on any social media platform is a byproduct of your business and you as a person. People buy people. They're buying to you before they're buying to anyone. So you've got to be a genuine person. Your business has got to be half a genuine, you know, and and successful. And by default, that will grow. You can't just go on there and go, I want a big following. Let's tag everybody I know. Uh, with a big following and hope that their audience see me because if they if by chance they do come to your page and they see your page what are you showing them they're going to want to see what are you showing them how can i take something from your page and take value from it and say you know what i learned something today or i can use that the good thing about brick lane is it's a double-edged sword the most searched thing on the internet is how to 
So the how-to people, if you show them how to do it and they can do it, they're going to do it themselves and thank you for it. But if you show them how to do it and it's too difficult and they can't do it and they can see you can do it, they're going to pay you to do it. That's it. it, it it's it's as simple as that. Yeah, I'm I, I'm on the same school of thought that that if you've got knowledge, pass it on. It doesn't cost you anything. And yes, you've had to train to get to that point. But if you can help somebody and give them that knowledge that you have and support and they can then ultimately go out and try and do it themselves and if they can do it, absolutely they're going to come back. Well, I tried and I, I really like the way that that person's doing it. So they're in my area, I'm going to get them to come and do it for me. So it, it is a good thing. And I think social media, I think I think it's a dark art. It, some people can make it work and some people can't. And I've, I've done posts where I've had loads of views and I've done other posts. I think, right, I really want this to work. Does it work? And I'll get two views on it. And it is what it is. And you, you just got to uh, go with the flow. And I'm a big believer in running your own race and not being too consumed by other people that are, yeah. are, are on doing it. And I, I, you make a really good point there as well, Matt, that just because somebody's got 65,000 followers doesn't mean that they're 65,000 genuine followers. They, they could have bought them because we all know it happens and they, they oh. could have um, just the empty follows really sometimes. I'd always, rather have... Always check people's engagement rights. That's yeah. it. Always check their engagement right against against their actual following. That's that's yeah. what I'll, I'll ever look at is... And I don't mean it... I'm not looking at it in numbers in like, oh, they've got this, they've got this. If I look at someone's page and they've got 100,000 followers and I see that their interactions are at 1,000... What are the other what are the other ninety nine thousand people not seeing? So if I find someone with one thousand followers and they've got two thousand views, these guys must be showing something credible. These guys must be engaging. I'm going to have a look at their page because they've got something that might, that, that might help me that I might like, and that's what I find. I find I'm looking at I follow pages now that have nothing to do with you know brick lane or areas of construction because they're engaging pages because I like looking at them. I like coming back to see what they're doing. Like a friend of mine who we met on Clubhouse, uh, well, I met on Clubhouse, and we've ended up really good friends, and, and we speak and message all the time. His name's Phil Anthony. Uh, he owns Nana Bowls. Nana Bowls is a massive food company in Thailand, uh, and he's a TED spe- a TEDx speaker, and oh, yeah. uh, he's absolute top guy, top top guy. And he, and you know that we end up meeting people like this because he's again a genuine pure guy. He's said to me, you know, he, he talks about. Uh, productivity and sleep patterns and whatnot, which again, to some people, mental health uh, with the mental health topic, I was like, oh, the s- sleep topic, you know. And he explained to me certain things like, well, you train your body to get fit, you train, you know, people talk about their mental health and you train to have a better mental mm-hmm. health. What do people, what, what, why sleep any different? It's a, and he's got, he said, you can have my free book, you can do this, I'll talk you through this. So, mate, again, it, it's genuine people, like they're, yeah. they're engaging people. Yeah, it is. And uh, and like you said before, you will lose people or followers if we want to talk about followers. But are they really the right followers you want and the right people you want around you? If you stay true to yourself and not try and bend and flex to suit other people, because ultimately that's just going to make you miserable because you're not living the life that you want to live. You're trying to impress somebody else to live. So you're living your life to try and impress somebody else. Yeah, you will lose friends or, or contacts or colleagues or acquaintances or whatever. But what you will do is you will gain others. And the, your friend circle might not be as big, but it'll be a very tight friend circle. And you can bounce yeah. things off each other. And you want, you want to surround your people, yourself with people that will lift you up and say, that's fucking great. Well done. That's a great success. Not people that are uh, stabbing you, uh, maybe not stabbing you in the back. But the, no, no, the, it's uh, exactly that. I'm it's, gonna, I, it's, how many people friendships. Can, that's it. How many people can you sit there now? Ash, Rob, when you both do something good now, I can count my real friends on one hand who help me in business and half of them my family. How many people, when you do something well now, you have, some, you have some success in life, uh, how many of them do you want to tell one? Why do you want to tell them? And how many people wouldn't you tell because they, they're not interested or they don't want to see you do it. How many, there's so many people out there that, you know, someone wins the lottery. How many people, if you told someone that someone won the lottery, would they go, oh, look, lucky bastards? Mm. I wouldn't say that. I, I'd say fair, fair play to them. Go and enjoy your money. You know, some people deserve a bit of luck every now and then. Do you know what I mean? It's, there's not many people that 
when I wanted to go out on my own and run my own business, how many people sat there and went, you know what, man, do it. I think you're capable of doing it. I think you'll make a success of it. It's all a bit risky, isn't it? Uh, I don't think you can do that. If you, it, it, do you know what I mean? It's how many, like, you wake up in the morning or the weather forecast is rain all day, let's not go to work. If you listen to that every day, you're never going to get anywhere in life. you got to yeah, do yeah. You've got to do, you've got to be true to you. You've got to do what you want to do because you're the one, at the end of the day, I say this to my kid, like I say, I, I'm trying to teach my kids what I was never taught. I can give them, I don't want to give them money. I don't want to give them everything. I want to teach them the right thing. So when I die, they've got the right tools. They're equipped enough to make their own decisions and be successful in life. That's my, listen, work comes, work is, it's great being successful. It's great having a good reputation. Work comes and goes, money comes and goes. My most important thing in life is my kids. That's yep. it. My, my job is to make sure they're secure, but I've also, don't just let them coast by in life. Teach them that there ain't no, there ain't no limitations. You want to be a Brit lad? Go and be a Brit lad. Say to my daughter, you want to go and be a crane driver? Go and be a crane driver. You want to go and be a solicitor? Go and be one. There's nothing that's stopping you. Go work. Work hard. Do what you want to do. Don't conform to what everybody else is doing. Don't worry about what the people are doing. Not with Instagram and people say, oh, everyone's doing reels. I've got to do reels or I've got to do this. Or, I've got to make sure my numbers are up here. That's why people... I don't people some people don't engage with me anymore because they end up saying I'm not interested. I, I don't want to talk to you. I'm not gonna no, I'm not gonna work because I don't believe in what you're doing. I don't believe like you. That that's mm. what it comes down to. People, people buy people, mate. That's what it comes down to. Like as long as my kids believe in me and and you know, I, I want them to turn around and go, that's my dad, like, you know, I'm proud of him. And that for me, that's if you're fake or you haven't got no good morals or you're a con artist. The first people that see that are your kids, the people that are around you, and that rub off on you. And then it goes around to the rest of the world, Lord, no matter whether you're engaged with one person or 10 million people. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And it, it's being true to your true self. And we um, we, can, we can all fall into that trap of, oh, God, I, I want to I wanna do what they want. I want the Ferraris or I want whatever and things like that. Running your, from a business point of view, smashing all the, the hours under the sun when really what what people don't understand and don't realize is what you've got to what you're sacrificing to get to them points and you make a, a mega point before of money comes and goes it absolutely comes and goes and there's no no way sk- skirting around it we all need it to survive no matter what you do you need money but money comes and goes memories never come and go you the time you're at work and or thinking you, you you need to be here and do this to be seen as being successful and look at me, blah, blah, blah. You're missing time out with kids, for example, um, and, and not making those memories, not having them special times. And you, you could have all the money in the bank, but be the loneliest person in the world or have nothing to show for it, so to speak. For me now with work, I go to work to get me to buy things, not buy material things, but to buy me time which allows me to have the time with my yeah. friends and family and do the things that I want to do that make me happy. And because of it, I, I've managed to find that place where I am now. And do you know what? I'm falling back in love with work for the right reasons. And I'm enjoying the Brit Lane. I'm enjoying the interaction with people. It's not a task. Like last night, I thought, oh, God, I've got to price up a couple of bits. And I smashed it out in about 25 minutes, whereas before, because I, I wouldn't want to do it, I'd be sat looking on my phone or messing around and not concentrating on what I wanted to do because it wasn't giving me any enjoyment. I didn't want to do it because my mind was elsewhere. And now, because I've now turned the tables on it and I'm in a better place, it allows me to do all those things. Uh, and then it becomes today. Take today, for example. I thought, right, I need to get these block work. It wasn't particularly a lot. I think it was 75 block I had to get up. And then, of course, the split's done. Um, and I had to move some trestles from one side to the other and because it's got suspended flooring and OSB is ridiculously expensive I thought I'm not going to put a thingy floor down I'll put planks down on it I got all that done I was done for about half one, two o'clock and then I drove over to Oldham to pick some lintels up because, and I smashed all that and I was home for five, half four, five o'clock Oldham's about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes away from me on a good run and I made it through rush hour traffic and back again and it's because my mind was free. I wasn't thinking about what everybody else was doing. I wasn't trying to be work the most hours in the day. And I wasn't trying to push myself the hardest. I was just doing what I can do in that day and not worrying about everything else. And then I became more productive anyway. So it, it, it just works better for you. That's it. Once you start worrying about 
bunch of, bunch of worrying about what people think here and trying to compare yourself. So you can't compare yourself to anybody else in the world. You're your most unique version of yourself. It's it doesn't bother me. A lot of people, I just don't get the whole competition thing. Like I don't get the whole I think I'm this, you think you're that. That's why I think life's too short. I've realized in in the span of life, we're here for a pinprick. You're here and you're here and it's done. Uh, we ain't we ain't you know the gods. We ain't the Greek. You know Achilles. We our names ain't gonna live forever. We ain't gonna be there. We ain't gonna be written into the history books. All you can do right now is make your own legacy, be your own name in your own history book for the people around you. That's it. Be be genuine to people. Tell them what you think of them if you don't like them. Uh, tell them what you think of them if you do. People are too negative these days. How many people are quick to point out a negative? How many times on site or Brick Lane or I said this to, to the lad that works with me, Cam, I actually tell him when he's done a good job. I tell him when I think he's done a, this is brilliant, that's brilliant, and he's, he weren't used to it because – the two used to being told negatives. You should be told positives as well. Look, my client, the, the customer I'm working for at the minute, engage with them every day. They're like, you know, every day they come and go, we're so happy with you. It's fantastic. We've never had this much. It's good to tell people when they're doing good. Too many people told they're bad. When it comes down to work as well, Ash, it's a question for Ash as well. How many people are, I love Brit Lane. I love my job. I, I love I love trying to be the best Brit Lane I can be. I'm sure you, sure you guys have been the same. How many lads have you had work for you? How many bricklayers turn up to work? How many of them can you actually look at and sit down with and say, you love your job? You're, or you're here, you, you don't want to get up in the morning. You're here just for a paycheck. You do enough just to get to get paid and go home. Or how many people do you look at and go, do you know what? You enjoy your job. You take pride in your work. Your tools are clean. You've got all the, all the gear that you need. You take pride in the area that you're in. Or they just come, do what they've got to do, and go. What's the ratio? I've... I've chewed through my fair chunk of hog carriers and brick layers. Um, I'd say it's a very 50-50 thing. You're, it's, you, you're either going to get a good one or you're going to get a bad one. Some of the bad ones are still good. They still put numbers in and they're still clean, but they hate it. Um, but then that makes me hate them because I want people that got pride. Um, and it took me took me a couple of years to build, build the team up um, that I've got now. Um, but I've got six bricklayers who arguably are all passionate bricklayers. They all love what they do. They do take pride in what they do. They have bad days. Yeah. Um, they make mistakes, but I, I don't, the reason why I feel like I've still got the team that I've got now is that we don't, we don't shout at each other. When, when one person in the group, uh, in the gang makes a mistake, they all feel like they've made a mistake. They don't, yeah, they don't, same. They don't single each other out. They'll say, like, I'll say, look, who's who's laid this bit here? And they'll go, um, Alex did. And I go, okay. And then they'll then they'll, what they'll do is they'll all jump on that area together and they'll make it right. Just because I've clocked it doesn't mean that um it, it's bad. It's because I've seen it. Yeah. It means that the client could have seen it, the site manager could have seen it, and I don't expect them to see everything because I'm always I'm coming and going, I'm walking around the site constantly. So I'll walk away for 20 minutes and I'll come back, but they've been in front of the wall for the past hour slashing away. Um, and I, I tell them all the time, don't take it as I'm having a go at you. We're just doing the right thing. We're now taking a step back. We're having a look. We're going to do the right thing. We're going to take this area out or we're going to change that brick or we're going to do this a bit differently. And they're all like, yeah, yeah, no, I can see what you're saying now because they, they stop for a second and have a look and they appreciate that. Uh, and they've, it gives them pride in the work. Have you so seen that? Sorry, Mike, go on. I was just saying that comes down to how you talk to them as well, Ash. You came yeah. in there all guns blazing, screaming and shouting. They'll just go, oh, God, Ash, I don't want to... Here he is again. To... Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and they'll, they'll just churn out shit as well. If, if they're going to be like, if he's going to treat me like shit, I'll, shit, I'll talk like shit. I'll, I, mentioned I'll it, I mentioned this in one of our first ever lives. Um, our, the, as the rates were going up um, for bricklayers, um, I had my contracts manager come come to me and said, "You still got bricklayers?" I went, "Yeah." He went, "Oh, most of them were like leaving because we wasn't matching the rate at the time." Um, and I said, "I can guarantee you now, if you offer one of my bricklayers two hundred and fifty pound, he's not going to go anywhere." And I said, "That's nothing, not my ego. They all like the team." And the argument was, "Is well, Ash, if I leave you and I go get an extra twenty pound, thirty pound a day, I'm with a group of guys I don't know." I don't know how they work, um, and I enjoy the way we work. 
So the extra 20, 30 quid, but I've got my, I've got the guys that all love what they do as well. I'm just going to stay here. And I, I was like, actually like quite thrown back by it. So I took them all for breakfast. <laughs> so, so, same as Instagram, mate. How many people are going to chase the clout and chase the money or stay with the engaged audience that they've got right now and listen to them? It's the, the grass. Do you know what? When it comes down to pride, well, I always, one thing I always I say this to my kids because they laugh at me. You seen that meme? There's always a meme that goes around and it's uh, every bricklayer's dad and it's a bloke standing there pointing yeah. at the building going, I worked on that house, son. I built that, son. I did that. Now, that's pride. That's that's I do that all the time. If, I was saying my son's 18 and my daughter's 16. We drove past one the other day going to town and they're like, before we even got there, dad, we know. We know you built that. We know you laid that pad, <laughs> and We know you put that brick in. We know. We don't need to hear it again. And we got there and I was dying to say, even if it was a joke, I was actually bursting like, I built that over there. <laughs> See that one? See that panel there? See that Morrison's? I built that panel with a feature of brickwork in. I was dying to say it just because I'm, you're proud of it. Like, it's not when you say, like, when you walk down and like your nan, like my mum would go, oh, your granddad worked on that because they're proud. That's a, for me. If my kids aren't saying that about me when I end here, then I've done something wrong. Because like my mum will always go, oh, your granddad worked on that stair house. Well, he did that. And I'm thinking, no, what? She's proud of a dad, man. Like he's he done something. He's left something there for her to look at. I want more kids to do that. I want them to go. My mom, my dad worked that. Do you know, my dad built that. I went to a client today. I went to price a job, and she was t- showing me the woodwork on a house that her dad did. She went, my dad did all this. He's a carpenter. He was the best. That for me, like that's his legacy. That's what he's a construction worker. He's a carpenter. He was a skilled tradesman and he put all this timber work, up, his feature timber work on the front of his house. Like, that's what it's about. No one's ever going to remember what website he had or how many followers he had on uh, MySpace, if that was what it was at the time. <laughs> nobody's nobody's going to remember them things. It's, it's, it's right. you. It's what you leave personally as a person. If like, They go as quickly as they come. Exactly. If, 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 um, I, if, if Instagram crashed tomorrow, and went bankrupt. Uh, how many people Ash, do you know on social media now? Their their asses would fall out, and they'd be the, the, the thing, they've lost they've lost a part of them. If 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 internet went down tomorrow, and I lost Instagram, TikTok, my website, I could wake up as happy as I am today, and go to work, go to work because people aren't. Being, when when you go do some work, Ash, or you go do some work, Rob, let's say you know you work, you've helped someone with mental health or Ash has managed a big massive project here. Referrals don't come from internet, they don't come from social media. That's just a go-to credibility source. And that can be falsified anyway. People remember, oh, hang on, who are, who are maybe that or who are they? Oh no, his name's Rob. He's a nice person. He helped me with that. Go to him because it's the human interaction. Uh, who, who's 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 that guy who gave me that advice on that uh, on Britland? I remember him. It was Ash from Britland Social Club. The Britland Social Club, yeah, granted, that's what you've made. That's the brand you've made uh, socially, but you've made it. You're the person. You're the person that's that's built that brand. Like many people will go, oh, oh, D5 Construction, they did that. But when you get recommended, it's always me. We've built that company. I've built that company. It's a company's. Uh, you know, a formation of my hard work and what what I've my personality. Your company is going to be a formation that's taking you know, version of you. And mine's an extended version of me. That's why we do well because it's extended from us. People remember you, the person. I think it shows. I mean, for you, Matt. Same for you, Rob, as well. Because uh, me and me and Rob talk quite often, probably two, three times a week. Um, and I think the reason why Rob, Rob said to me when I first met him, he says. Ash, just keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Your passion and the love for what you do, it will come through. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you'll get to where you want it to be. Um, I didn't think I'd ever be in the position I'm in now, um, growing as big as I am and having, having the partners that we've got involved. I didn't, I didn't ever think it was going to get to that point um, or be having conversations with people like yourself. I mean, even... Even the conversation, uh, the interviews that we're going to be having with a few other people, like I used to just sit there and watch their videos all the time, and now I'm actually getting the opportunity to understand um, more about more about these bricklayers. I mean, for me, Matt, you was doing some great videos. I don't, I think we've only chatted once, and it was a very brief moment. But the fact that we can now get to know Matt from D Five 
sounds like it's from a band, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt from Defire. Um, and we get to know you and your your um, philosophy and views on the working life of the bricklayer and the mental health side of it, the Instagram, the, the real the real world of it, your family is that's that's what it's about, and that's that's what I want to share. Nobody sees that, mate. It's uh, everyone just thinks you associate construction builders are just just builders. They don't, they don't think. They got no work ethic. They've got no goals in life. They got no ambitions. They go. They build. They go home. Oh, what a load of cards! What a what a load of uh, more, more dreams, more dreams and aspirations. Oh, flipping out. There was times I was in temporary accommodation on Christmas Day when I didn't have five pound. I couldn't buy. You know, it's it, it's times like that. It's the form you to the, the make or break you into massive dreams. Like listening to Gary Vee at the age of nineteen, thinking who's this bloke and the way they get you motivated and. And what you want in life, and what you want for not just you, but once you take the, the selflessness out of it, once you're in a position where I think for me, it turned like when you realize it's not about you, it's about something else or someone else. Uh, it's easy for me, easier for me because obviously the kids, but it's when you're ready to sacrifice everything to make sure not to give them what they want, but so, to, to secure them a future and to give them the tools that you know and you my job is to educate myself as much as possible like rob said it's nice to have a successful company so you can financially free yourself up time wise to spend time with these people which mine and my kids but then also my job is to educate myself as much as i can and be the most intelligent person in the room so i can pass my education on to them so they can be intelligent now people like i said people don't expect this from builders like i've done i've done a few talks before I do uh, in person talk with him because it's a diff- people don't see the backstory to some people, but what again, mentally what they've been through, physically what they've been through, financially what they've been through, how they are, the work they've put in to get there, the things they're still sacrificing to maintain the success that they're having, the worries that they have about what if what, what if it doesn't go well? It's going well now because we're in a boom. What about in 24 months' time? What do I do then? Uh, nobody sees all, all this and like I said, it's nice to, to speak. Like, I love hearing people's backstories. I love listening to people's, like, how they've come about, how they've got the job they've got and how they got to where they did and how people, like, end up in the situations that they're in. It's real, real good to hear. And I love seeing success stories. And a success story is not just all what – I don't class a success story as, you know, somebody who's earning all this and doing but a success story for someone maybe that wouldn't leave their house for a month uh, because they were that anxious and they started going on days out on a Saturday. I've heard, yeah. I, I had a conversation with someone doing that. That's a massive success to them. That to, to them, that's they never thought they would do that. It's it's things like that. People just see us, oh, bricklayers, builders. They're on social media. They're talking to each other. What do they know? It's not about what we know. It's about are you willing to listen to someone else's story? Uh, can you take something from it? I think no. the thing is we're we're real life people. It, and I'm not saying other people aren't, but builders generally are. We are working class real people who we're not we're not out to be influencers in a social media role like um yeah. there are not that, that people do now um we have a man uh, a labor intensive job uh we do get dirty we do get wet um we you do get broken fingers people do kill that people do kill themselves um people get killed um it can it can drive you insane you can lose your wife over it or husband even one and two um and you know what i mean there's no end of things that happen to builders I mean, and that does happen to other people but we are in the thick of it Rob, i think Rob is- i think i think you've got to be a certain type of person to be uh and then in and you know in any trade and for me i it can be pissing it down outside and we all know we can't lay in the rain, but it could be pissing down, it could be freezing and uh, dark and miserable and the people that will look outside and go, oh God, I'm glad I'm not outside. I'm loving it. I absolutely love <laughs> being outside. I love being in all the weathers. If I, if I can't do any rain, if I can't do any work in the rain, I'll find something else to do, but I'll be outside in it. It, it doesn't bother me and also means you get to finish early because you're pissed through. But it's, it's still enjoyable to do and... You got you got to be made of a certain type of stuff to work in this trade, and but just because you are that certain type of stuff doesn't mean that you don't want to educate yourself, you don't want to better yourself, you don't want to get yourself a better future because it's 
there's so many opportunities within this industry to do all those things. You can run a business on several levels as well. You could you could be the big boys like what me and Ash have worked for in the past, and or we could be down at the the uh, home level like you are, Matt. Um, and there could be people in between that split themselves between the two levels. There's there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of opportunities within this industry, and I think people need to realise that that it it is a great career, and you can go to go down the university path and things like that if you, if you wanted to go on to do the masters and everything like that but at the same time you could turn up every day lay the bricks knock the nails in screw the screws do the plumbing whatever and go home uh, at night and be completely satisfied with what you've done that day uh, and wake up the next day ready and raring to go again that's what it is it's your version i heard this the other day uh right it was a while back you what is your sense of fulfillment for you, what fulfills you? What fulfills you might not fulfill me. What fulfills Ash might not fulfill you. It's what your level of fulfillment is. What does fulfill you? And it's not like people always go, what's, oh, what, what's your fulfillment? And they think there's an end place. Once you get here, you're fulfilled. It's not what's your sense of fulfillment for each day, for each week, for each, you know, it comes, it can be different every single day. And it's the people that are constantly battling that are never satisfied, that they're never, you can be never satisfied, but in a healthy way. Mm. So you always, but I, I cannot be satisfied with certain things, but I can still go in the day and go, I'm happy today. You know, I've, I've done this, I've done that, I've learned this, I'm doing this tomorrow. Uh, this is going to benefit me in six months' time. It's people are, but we're in a day and age again. I, I know I kind of contradict, I kind of contradict the point I said earlier. In, a, in the span of life, we're here for a pin prick. I get that. But there are too many people in a rush. There are too many. It's not that filming time, you see, where they've got the time on them, they're monitored by time. Uh, and, and all their currencies with time. Oh, is that the one with Bruce Willis in it? And, no, Justin, no, just, Justin, Justin Timberlake. Uh, that's it. Oh, no, I've not uh, seen that one. Uh, it's, mate, it's, a good, cool. it, it's a It's a good concept in the sense of he went to another place, uh, the rich place where they've all got loads of time, and she said, you're not from around here, are you? And it wasn't based on, you know, again, when it's, it's the concept of, you know, if you see someone you thought had loads of money, you're not from around here because you mean you've just pulled in a Ferrari. He turned up and she said, you're not from around here, are you? And he's like, well, how do you know that? She goes, because you moved too quick. You know, it's, it's, it was based on time. When you're faced with time, they did everything so, so fast. Everything was in a rush. Everything had to be now. You had to get your end goal now. Like People see all these successful, like, even with Britlane. I remember when I was at Britlane, I thought, I just want to be the best now. I'm on 75 quid a week. I want to go and earn, but at the time I only wanted to be a better bricklayer because I wanted to earn more money. Uh, now that's not the case. I try and explain to the young, I try and explain to the younger kids. You'll get to a point where you'll realise it's for you or not for you when you change the concept of you were doing it for the money. Money's great, but you want to do it because you want to be good at your job. Like. I want to be good at my job. I want to be the best bricklayer. I want people, when they talk about good bricklayer, I want them to go, oh, Matt, D5, great brickwork. I'll give you the, I'll give you the best like. Now, when you offer value and when you offer good stuff and people, when how many times have you give prices to people over the years, God, where they've gone, oh, oh, can we have a look at that? Or can, can, can we, it's a bit expensive. If you offer value and you're credible and they believe in what you do, once you give them the price, they don't even they don't even ask for anything. They'll just go, "Yep, yeah, I want you to do it." I, I have people ringing me now saying, "I'm not getting anyone else to quote it. Just give me the cost, and I want you to do it." That's it. That's they're the customers you want. Not yeah. like not firefighting with them over over hundred quid. Or I'll do the I'll provide this and you provide this. It doesn't work that way. No. And that that, that if you can get to that point, that success in very in in a in so many ways because you're picking and choosing the work you're doing you're picking and choosing the clients you work for you're working for the right clients you don't have that worry of am i going to get paid out i'm going to get paid are they going to mess me around and all this out there and genuine genuinely they are wanting you as a person and your business and everything you stand for and that that's phenomenal that you, you've got to that point Matt, so quickly because D5, it's only been around, is it a few years it's been around D5? So so, so D5, is a, so I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. You'll like this one. So when I was working as a bricklayer for my uncle, uh, 
oh, how many years ago was it? I've been with him. I must have been, I had three kids, so Milo, my third. I've got obviously five, but when I had three, so Milo, it was about nine years ago, she was one. And I remember sitting there thinking, <clears throat> I can go and do this on my own. Not knowing nothing about business, running a business, costs, quoting. I know nothing, just knowing I was a good Brit lad. I knew I was a good Brit lad. Uh, so I remember going to him. Uh, I remember saying to him, I said, Pete, oh, I think I'm going to gonna leave like I appreciate everything I'm gonna go and have a go on my own and he was like no come on I was like no nah, no nah, I'm gonna do it when I brought a Bilingo Citroen Bilingo went down to the local sign writers and said I want some sign writers I'm a Brit lad he goes what are you gonna call yourself I was like I don't know what he goes think of a name and I just went JSM Brickwork JSM is my kids initials JCN and Miley at the time so he printed up my van JSM Brickwork all proud as punch drove to my mum's went look at me van I'm good to go I went, so right then, what are you doing Monday? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> it's true though, isn't it? Yeah. I, d- I, d- I don't know. I'm just going to be a Brit lad. And they're like, yeah, but so what, what are you doing? I was like, uh, well, I've got one job, this, this, this garden wall up the road. Bear in mind, I've got three kids. I've got three kids at this point. Uh, I've got a house. And I went, uh, yeah. So I went and did this garden wall. It took me three days. Uh, it took me three days and it worked out that I didn't cost it completely right. So I ended up earning about £109 a day. Uh, and then I had to go looking for work again for the next week. I got one more job after that. Made a load of leaflets, posted them around the area, which I learned about marketing, started. Got one job out of that, which I earned about 500 quid. And in the end, that's when I went to work. I couldn't do it. I went to work as a site manager stroke Britlayer for a local company who I know who were quite big at the time. And I stayed with them for three years and learned and learned and learned more. And that's when I went from them to a multi-million pound company uh, on a massive scale. But that was my progression. And then I go back to the, the topic of D5. Uh, once I was with them, I was, again, by, the, by this point, I'd learn everything to learn about project management. I learned everything I could learn about marketing, social media, uh, even like, Everything within this company that I was taught, on the side, I was kind of running. I say running. Uh, for people who are new, I was using brick layers and subbing it out to them and taking it on as a package, but I wasn't actively doing the work. Uh, I would go and do the brick work on weekends to take certain jobs on with the luxury that the jobs I wanted to do. Uh, and that kept getting busier and busier and busier. And as uh, COVID happened, uh, and that started because I was on, uh, on a basis where I was, could freelance and do certain things with them and do my own thing. As the, the time come down and I started having less time there, I was, in, I was investing more time into D5. And then I think when the time come, when my, I, was, I remember speaking on a club, I was more workload in the sense of jobs. I had like, I'm a board in front of me now. I've got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, five, eight, five, sixteen, 16, 16 quotes up there. And these are not like just quotes that any quote that comes through. These are actual funneled quotes that are the most credible quotes where in the location that I want them, the work that I want to do and credible customers. So these are going to be converted leads to me. Now this is without the 26 to do things I've already got to do on current leads and the current job that I'm doing. So I, I had to go all in. So mm. as far as I remember speaking again to my accountant about business one, she said, you know, we need to do it properly. You need to go limited. You can't just keep subbing it out. So that's what I did. I went limited as a company, went all in, went all in with the marketing. In fact, I've got a lot of good people around me, a lot of knowledgeable people around me. And obviously that's where D5 come from. D5 is realistically me, it was now my second out done lever. I've got five kids. It was that simple. Yeah. Back to the JSM, back to the JSM moment. Uh, and I've had a couple of people here and there, but I've got one kid that works for me full time, Cam, great lad, uh, training Brit lad. I've got the right work, work ethic. I was always scared to bring people into the company because I always subbed sections of the workout to people who I knew who were good at the job. And to take someone on full time on your company, like, I, I, I had trust issue in. They're not going to believe in my company the way I do. They're not going to deliver it how I do. But I had to let the reins go at some point. And it's the best thing I did. Uh, and then I've got another kid that works for me uh, part-time because he is, again, he's a site manager for another company. But what we've got works. It works right now. Like I said, I've worked for the multi-million pound company at uh, management level. 
and I prefer doing this. I'm, I'm the master of my own destiny. You know, it's mm. as, as corny as that sounds, as, as cringy as it sounds. You know, I, I, I believe you can fend for yourself and make your own. You know, get your own things in life. But D five for me, strictly, it has to be a success. It has to succeed. Like I'm not the person to let it fail. If I, yeah. if I got knocked, if I get knocked down 28 times, I'm going to get up 29 just purely because these are watching me. These have to, I have to make sure I do for these. So there's no uh, every day I go through. You know, I've got I've got a, a board up here. What what my targets are, what my milestones are, as in life, as in my my plan, my my time plan, financial plan, where I want to be at certain times, how big I want the company to scale, where I want to scale it to, where I need. Uh, what sections of the company? So I don't just want to be D five construction, and we're dealing, you know, domestic uh, bills and whatnot. I want to have different areas to the company, but I want us to have the same brand. That's where the branding comes in. We're not just a company. I want a brand. Uh, but like I said, I, I I can't fail in my mind. Now, even if I did, I won't admit that I failed. I'll just keep going and make sure that they get what they need. Bit of a deep story there for just asking me how did D five come about? But went from, yeah. J- went from JSM to fucking D five. What's my language? It, it's your it's your passion, and it 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 comes out, and it's great to see, Matt. It really is good to see that we're all sat here like talking about bricklaying, but ultimately we're talking about everybody's passion, and your passion is bricklaying, and you've turned it into a business with D five, and the, the first company you had is not. A failure in, in any sense of the word. It was an education for you, and you've yeah. used that. You've used that education to next time you come round to do it, which is the present. Now you're doing it. You'll know that. Right, last time I did it, I didn't market myself properly. I didn't get enough work in. I'm, this this didn't work for me last time, and now I need to do all this. And that's now what you're doing, and you've gone out and got the knowledge that you need, and, and you're moving forward with it in a positive way. And if you can help people out with those like we were talking about before your um brit lane tips and tricks and things like that and brit lane for beginners you are now passing that knowledge on for somebody who is probably could be right at the very beginning of the journey that you were on 10 15 16 years ago whatever it was and they can build forward and they will always remember oh i got i the, the thing that got me into this or if anybody ever asks them a question what how did you become a brit lane? Because I watched Matt at D five, he he, he he did these. I, I, I'm glad you said that because you know what? If I have to say now, hand on my heart, that series, Brickland Tips for Beginners, uh, it's on my baby. It's like it really is like my baby. Like I, I am trying to put videos, these short reels out. But I'm I tell you what I'm doing, how I come about it. I'm trying to go back to how I was and educate myself as if I was in that position. Yeah. yeah. Now. I've had that many messages of kids, mainly from America, uh, young kids saying, I, I, want, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I want to be sure if I want to be a Brit lab and watching your videos. I've had people sending me videos, adults, of things they've built, saying, I watched your videos to do build this. I had a university lecturer, listen to this, from America, asked to FaceTime me. So I thought, this is a bit, yeah, sound. So he FaceTimed me and he's like, hey, man, I'm not going to do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> he, went, he, went, he, went, he went, hey, Matt. Uh, I, I need a favour. I'm, ask, I'm asking you permission. Can I use your brick lane tips for beginners in my lecture for a PhD? So they're doing like a construction, a section of it is masonry in America. And he yeah. said, to get their marks for this, I, I know so much, but I'm asking, can I incorporate your guide? Your Because I've turned it into a guide now. I've put the series yeah. into a guide. Can I use your guide in our Level, in our section of curriculum and they've got to do these tasks and I was like are you joking he's like nah I was like you're serious like this is going to be in, in America in some American university's curriculum of masonry and he's like yeah 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 you know we can talk about some reading but I said no I don't want nothing for it I said this is the whole point mm-hmm. why I did it please use it please use it uh, and let me know if that if they if you want and I'm going to do more obviously I'm only on episode 7 at the minute I've planned like a 24 episode series of of the fundamentals of where it's at uh which it's done so well like i can't get my head around like it's my it's my, my biggest achievement for me is on, on social media is not like tiktok following and the views and oh it, it's that it's that series because i found something that i can do day in day out that i like doing and 
even some of the videos that I've planned, like I plan them, like I thought, oh, I need this, I need this, I need this. But some days I'm building something and I'll go, I never knew this when I was 16. I'm mm. going to do this one now. And I'm going to do it right now. Uh, and as uh, back to our topic about the younger generation and apprenticeships, apprenticeships are dog shit now. They're dog shit. There's not a credible apprenticeship for me personally. Like that, here in Birmingham that I can see, uh, kids aren't learning properly. They're not being taught the right things. And that's down to, again, the tutors. They're not, they're not real tutors. They're not wanting to teach kids. Uh, now, let's say I, I personally think we're a dying breed. Uh, a Brit Larry takes pride in their work who produces good, good level stuff. I think we're a dying breed. There's no younger kids coming through. But I think if these videos even stoke two, three, four kids to go, I want to lay bricks, not just for me, but I want to I, I want to learn how to, he does it, what he that. gets to. Uh, for me, it's cannot, surely it can only be a good thing to keep people in the trade. Surely, surely it can only be a good thing. If same with any trade, like there's, 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 there's carpenters that I see do it online. There's, there's, you know, uh, metal work. I've seen a, a steel fabricator. Who would have thought that could have been so interesting? But it's brilliant to watch what he was doing. Uh, I just think if people make these videos with them, not not just for the sake of it, not just I'm not going to name too. I won't name people because I'm not going to do that here. Uh, but there's people on there now who just make videos, tip videos, because they want the viewing. They're not some of the tips they make. Who are they relevant to? You know, you, you've got to target your audience. You've got to say mine are specific, mine are specifically for brick lane. They're for brick lane and they're for brick. And it says it in the clue, brick lane for beginners. It's for beginners. It's tips for beginners. So instead of just throwing generic, you know, unless you're a general builder and you've got some good tips, which a few people have, they're brilliant videos. They're for the general DIY. But for someone who's specific in a trade who are just throwing random, that's what I, I started to do. I was doing random tips, but then I realised, they're a bit erratic. People aren't. People, I'm showing it in, once you get to this, well, how do you get to this? You need to do this first. So I thought the series, break it down from one to 24. And like I said, if it can educate anybody, and the amount of feedback I've got, like I said, that for me, the, the American university one was, was an absolute peach. I don't, it's crazy. He sent, me, he sent me a video of, uh, of one of his lectures and he was talking about it. Like, and he put it up <laughs> on the screen. It was funny. It was real good. Matt, what would, if we if we was to say if you was to say to me, I have to, I'd have to cut it out. Shit. <laughs> if I was gonna, <laughs> if I was if I was to ask you, what is the number one tip for an apprentice? What would it be? Oh, very good one. The number one tip. Oh, there's, there's a there's quite a few rolled into one in there. Just one. One. <laughs> There's, there's so, you could go on forever giving an apprentice a tip. For you, D5 Construction, I've got an apprentice in front of you and you're going to give him your number one tip going into the industry. What would it be? Be a sponge. Be a sponge and be willing to listen and learn everything you're taught. That's it. Don't, don't be arrogant. Don't be ignorant. Don't be the guy that doesn't, that thinks you know everything or only takes so much. Be a sponge, taking everything, taking a wealth of knowledge off every single person, and that'll that'll suit you throughout life. As a bricklayer, go and work for a decent company and be that sponge. Be the sponge that is willing to learn off all these experienced people. I, I can hold my hand up that when I when I left college and I got my when I, well, I was at, when I was at college and I got my first apprenticeship, that you do kind of go to the arrogant way, and if you've got the right uh, teacher. Uh, uh, builder bricklayer who's teaching you he soon should knock you down quickly yep. to realise you're you don't need to be arrogant you're not going to learn asked. like this yeah I've done the I've same asked. thing I got knocked off my perch quickly and I just shut up and I just changed my whole attitude towards the whole bricklaying um, scene <laughs> and yeah I, I, I'll be honest, I was there same as you, mate. I was there. I, I remember being around great bricklayers. But now I'm only succeeding now in life at this stage over the past few years because I've been willing to I open up. I want to learn everything. I want to take the most experience. Like I listen to 24, 24 solid, solid, not, not solid in a row, hours of like Elon Musk tapes and uh, Gary V tapes and even down to, you know, uh, authors of like the, the, the guy who was in seven pound. Like it, it's, it's things, it's different outlooks. I remember... Because I was that guy, that kid, I thought, oh, they can't, what can they teach me? I can lay bricks, you know. I wouldn't ask for help. I'd just do it. Uh, people were trying to advise me, and I just wouldn't listen. I'd just keep doing what I'm doing. 
Uh, and I remember once he bit me in the arse. And this wasn't through arrogance this happened, but I think it was a build-up of me being the way I was that this happened. I remember coming in on a sunny day. We were working on a school in Warwick. And the, the, the foreman was a big burly, you know, you know, big. Everyone was scared of him. And I remember in the morning, I built my first soldier course over a lintel. And I remember calling one of the Brit lads around saying, yeah, what do you think of that? Do you think that's good, like? Yeah, it's all right. A couple of big joints, but it, it, it is what it is. I kind of like worked it way. And then I had three bricks left and there was quite three decently big joints. And then the, uh, the foreman came around and went, he just stood there and looked at it and went, what's that? And I could smell the drink off him from the night before as well, which didn't happen. He was in shorts. I went, oh, it's me soldiers, like. He went, what the fuck's that? So I just told you, me soldiers. And he just lifted his foot up and went, boom. He put his foot straight through the soldiers. But what had happened was, because of the soldiers and it was the cavity and it was the, the three course above the lintel, his foot went straight through and the bricks on top come down on top of his shin and he's wrenched his leg back out. And his leg was bleeding. He got the brick, threw it off the scaffold, ranted at me and stormed off. I stood there thinking, everyone was looking at me. I was embarrassed and I thought, let's just keep my soldiers down. And I put my tools on my shoulder and I walked off. And then the boss rang me before I got to the gate. He goes, where are you going? I says, I ain't fucking having that. I- I'm going home. I'm going home. I'm not having it. And then I went home in a mood and I thought, I ain't going back there. And then he rang me and he was like, it's not the way to go about it. You go back in there, you put your chin up and you go and you go and crack on with your day life and go and do it. And I thought, yeah, I better go and do it. And I went back then kind of with a different mindset. My mindset was, how can I build something now so that doesn't happen? How can I make sure that I eradicate that happening? One, it was make sure it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect, but also I have a different outlook. I can't keep acting that way. I've got to try and open up a little bit more. And I was only young, like, I still didn't probably get it then. Uh, I reckon I've only expanded and opened up, like, probably since I had my youngest son, who's only five now, really. I don't think, like I said, it's hard to teach kids, isn't it? Because you couldn't teach me. I bet you couldn't teach you at 16, 17 years old. But you, Rob, but you couldn't be taught either really as much as you, as, as you could be now. Uh, yeah, it's because you're at a stage in your life where you understand things a bit better now. And I mean, we I had Rory on, he was an apprentice at my work. He, he's been on the podcast and uh, he tells his story, but he, he was, he couldn't, he couldn't teach him. He thought he knew it all. So we were doing um, Rex and Prison. This was a few years ago and he came on giving it Billy Bug Balls. I want to fucking do a lot of it. I want to do it. I want to do it. So we were doing column encasements around the steelwork, you know, like fire protection. And it was 150 mil, 150 mil, and then a half, and then you had to bond it over. And it was about six courses to do. Anyway, I set him up doing it, got the first course done. I came back an hour later and he'd, he'd put two courses on. I'm like, Rory, what are you playing at? You, sh- you should have this done. All right, you're not, not going to smash it out quick. But I said, you should be a lot further on than you are. And I was like, I can't get it to go plumb. Like, well, I thought you could do all this. I thought you knew all this, Rory. I thought I thought you could smash all this work out. You, you're a Brit layer, aren't you? Like, you keep telling me. He's like, I can, do, I can do it. I can do it. Just fuck off. Leave me alone. So I, I went away and I came back. And he, he, I stood at the other end because it was a huge hall that was on. It was an exercise hall. And I was watching him for about 20 minutes. And he was getting so frustrated. He was smash it. He'd knock one side of the pillar, then go around the other and knock it the other way. And then knock it the other way. And then I went over to him and went, Take it down, Rory. Think about what you've just done there. Well, I said, take it down, clean them up, clean all your cuts up because your cuts work. Go and have a fag or a piss or whatever and come back to it and we'll split out. And he went, yeah, all right, let's do that. <laughs> and then I showed him how to do it. And he was all right after that. And I think it's young, young, dumb and full of cum, isn't it, really? It's the old saying, isn't it? They, you, they think they can do it. You think you know best and all that. And it doesn't... It's only with time, experience, and knowledge that you realise that they know what they're doing. I'll listen to them. The kid that works with me, Cam, I'll name him. Like I'm gonna, I'll tell him that I'll, I'll talk about him. Is he's kind of the similar but opposite. He can do it. He's he's good at what he does. But he, he's 25 and he's got a short attention span. His head goes. His head goes. He said to me when he first started. 
I don't like really working on my own. I like being around like yourself and, and learning and being told what to do type of thing. I said, okay, I said, but eventually you've got to have a bigger goal than that for me. Do you want to work with me? Uh, I want you to stop, uh, I want your running jobs. I want you setting stuff out. I want to send you places. He's like, yeah, yeah. And I learned real quick. I left him on his own once and he rang me up. It was a simple job. And it, I'll say it to this day, it was the simplest job in the world. And he rang me up and he's, he te- had a big text saying, this is all... Uh, gone pear shaped. I've had enough. I can't do it. I'm leaving. <laughs> and I rang him. I said, What are you doing, Cam? He's like, I can't do it. The bun's gone and, and this has happened. And I can't. I said, It's four course of brick. I set it out. He's like, But this ain't working. I said, Stop. I said, Stop. I said, Put your trial down. I said, I'm going to talk you through it. Put your trial down. You went, Okay. I said, Go and stand down the bottom of the garden. I said, Take a minute. Calm yourself down. Stop getting so aggressive with yourself and head up. I'm not there. You can do it. Think about it, go back, and I'll speak to you again in an hour. And then when I spoke to him, he's like, yeah, I did it. I did it in the end. I just needed – his head goes so quick. He ran it this morning as well. He was on another job today, formulating some blocks, and he ran me up this morning going, I'm working, I hate working off someone else's work. This is crap. It's out of plumb. It's 50 mil out of gauge. I said, stop worrying about what's wrong with that. You just do your work. You make your work good. Stop worrying about it. Stop overthinking it. Stop. Put your trial down, and he did it again, and he went back, and he rang me today, and he went, yeah, because I had a good day in the end. He went, oh, I get it. But it, again, he's 25, and his head goes straight away. He's not good on his own. He's got a negative. So my point, but what my point is, when he started working for me, every situation we'd been, he'd point out the negatives. He'd point out what was wrong with it or what he didn't like about it. And I, was, and I tried to change it. I'd go, what do you like about it? What's good about this job? What do you think you can do there? And now his mindset's kind of changing. But back to what Ash was saying, what we were saying about people's mindset that come to work with you, back to the advice. What's your advice? Be a sponge. Be willing to listen. As soon as you start realising that you can learn so much of so many different people, like the world is your oyster. You can work, You can learn. Elon Musk said you that you don't need college to learn. Like, you know, you, you learn how to be an employee at college. You learn how to get certain things. You can go and learn to be what everyone learns to be if you're willing to learn it. How many people go, people say to me, they go, oh, how do you do this? And how do, how long has it took to get there? Uh, you know, you're doing really well. Well, really, it probably took me 20 years. It hasn't took me two, it hasn't took me the, the, the two years that the company's been legitimately open. It's took me 20 years to fucking get there. Uh, how do you, you do your Instagram? Realistically, uh, my Instagram's actually been active about a year, year and a half. But my personal Instagram, I've probably been using uh, five years, six years. But then what you don't see is it's took me on Instagram here now to be relevant every single day for that year and a half, not once a week. And when they mm-hmm. see the time, when they see the time that you've got to put into things, and how hard, you know, it is hard work and you've got to sit down. You've got to, if you want to learn something, you've got to be willing to learn it. You can't say, I want to learn it. And then when you see that it's a three hour course or documentary that you've got to sit through and think, it's out for me. That's how you're going to live the rest of your life, isn't you? You're not, you know, you've got to want it or you ain't. Yeah, absolutely. I guess the next question should be, what's the biggest mistake you've ever made at work? I mean, I mean, like building something. Have you ever built something and gone, oh, shit. Yeah. I might so the last, the, 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 the last interview we've done was with the traditional bricky Day Neil, and he built a garage backwards, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, he put, oh, he put the opening at the back of it, didn't he? Yeah. So <laughs> what's yours, Matt? So, oh, I've, made a, I've made a couple of stinkers. Like, in my time, I've made a few. There's two that stick with me because they're embarrassing. They're embarrassing. But do you remember when I told you I, I left my my uncle's company and I went to start JSM that didn't work so I went to work for another bricklayer first and I went out and said oh, I'm, I'm the best bricklayer ever basically that's how I made it sound I'm the best bricklayer <laughs> ever uh, and he put me on a new build house in Nuneaton uh, and he said you're the best bricklayer ever go sit there and build that internal block work and me trying to impress and be all guns blazing and not thinking not checking the drawing properly uh, I built the internal block work and I got it up a lift on my own with a labourer by about three o'clock. Just just solid block work, straight two windows. And I was like, ah, boom. I was like, Dave, come on, mate, what's next? And he come over and he come over and he's like, 
nice, yeah. You know, you got a few blocks down. I went, yep. I said, so what, where do you want me on? Like, do I get to go now? I'm like, no, we'll go on the next one. He went, quick question, two questions. He went, where's the winner in the back? Mm-hmm. I went, uh, there's a winner in the back. And he's like, yeah, it's down the drawing. Clear as down the drawing. Where's cavity try? I was like, I've got this up 10 course <laughs> all the way around, four walls, no cavity try. On the first course, I didn't put a cavity try on. I put it down onto the brickwork and obviously lap the corners and whatnot. So there was no cavity try. I missed the window. And then he looked at me and went, bang in the middle of the room, this is as well. When was you going to put the wind post in? And I was like, so I've got all these brick layers on the other plots looking at me. So I'd missed the whole try around the whole thing. I'd missed the window and I didn't put the wind post in the middle of the back panel. He said, you know what's going to happen? I went, yeah, we take it down. And I he went, yeah, in your own time and you're not being paid. I was like, yeah, I know. So that that's my biggest, 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 like a consecutive bunch of fuck ups on one plot. Uh, and he never let he never let me go and set out on my own then for a couple of months. <laughs> We've all done it. We've all done. Th- I've I've set buildings out to the wrong side of the line and all sorts, and it's not till we've, we've put a lift on one of them. Well, in fact, one of them that I did wrong was uh, um, not too far from you. Is at um, army base in Stafford, and I just went hundred mils to the wrong side of the line, <laughs> set it all out, and then the guys came in to do the uh, the flooring, and they went that end of the building is massively out. You've done something wrong up there. And then as soon as I walked over it, I spotted it. It was like, fuck me. I've laid to the back of the line instead of the front of the line. And it, it can be easily done. At least I've done that. I've, I've done that, Lowe's. Yeah. I've done it, Lowe's. And I've even at time, like when I was younger, uh, on my own job, I rang the architect and gone, are we okay being 100 mil bigger here or what? Yeah. <laughs> can we get away with yeah, it? <laughs> mine was probably, um, it was just one that sticks with me. Um, it was like a jack wall, but it was divided by a corridor. Um, and I looked, I built the wall one side of the wall. Um, so like a T, T section that side, and the other side was a T that's, uh, that side. And, um, I've run the line through, we put the joists on and I've gone like that, look down the, look down the wall. And it's just gone. Oh, <laughs> stinker. Because, because I've built the two walls independently and I've not ran the wall all the way through. Um, and there was it, it had an opening in between the two. I didn't see it. So when I, we've gone to put the joist on, um, I didn't realise that the wall, although the wall had a gap below, it carried on above because it had a lintel on top of it. And yeah, it had like a, I think it was about a seventy-five mil like twist on it. And do you know that? Do you know that feeling? The feeling when somebody when somebody you sick. don't know about it, somebody spots it and they go. So who's, who's made this fuck up? And all I, of yeah, no one saw it. No one saw it. Oh, yeah, I, 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 had the, I had the worst scenario that that plot that I was on was central to about seven other plots of other, other big cans <laughs> of brick layers. Uh, and I was the topic. I was the topic at the lunch, but I wouldn't go in the canteen then. I wouldn't go in the canteen. I sat outside. I thought, and then it got to the point where I can't even. He said to me, You've redeemed yourself now. Don't worry about it. He said, Don't worry about it. Uh, I just left. It's, it's, it's all right. Um, I'll Can I ask you a question, Ash? Because I've been dying to ask this. I've seen it on a few of your videos. <laughs> on. It's not a bad one. It's not a bad question. I'll answer it regardless. I always see a t shirt in a frame on your wall in your garage. Yeah. Why is that one in a frame? Because that's the very first Britney Social Club t shirt. I thought so. I thought it was. I was just checking. <laughs> do, you, do you want to see something? Well, I've got this. Right. I haven't had a frame yet. So, this. I had RLM brickwork for from 2005 up to 2012, and I, I need to get that frame. Ah, bring I've, that back. And uh, and it's I the first, uh, uh, it's the very first one. That's it. It's your it's your key back to it. Now that yeah, I can see it now. That's a nice one. That that one of mine, that RLM brickwork. It was a huge part of my life. We ended up going bump because of the recession, people not paying. Uh, my naivety, not pricing things properly and uh, all sorts of stuff. And I hated it. That's when I really fell out of love with the industry, but I stuck with it. 
And I've got that and I've got, because I had a railway job, um, so I've got an orange one as well. I need to get them framed and put them up. But this is just the, like we're going on about rooms, this is just the junk spare bedroom in our houses. But I now use that as my inspiration to yeah. keep going forward to... I, I used to think of it because we lost. We had a debtor's book of 64 grand. And then we had um, like money that we 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 invested our, our own 40 grand of our own savings over a couple of years that we kept pumping back into the business to try and keep it going. So we, all in all, including tax and everything like that, we lost about 120 grand. And I, I it sent me under. I went bankrupt. But... I used to hate it and really despise it and talk about it quite a lot in, a, in an angry way. But now I think about it as an education, an expensive education. Expensive uh, one, yeah. Yeah, but I'll, I'll never, ever let myself get to that point again. And I, I learned, there was a lot of lessons learned. And so I'll, I'll frame it because that is a fuel for me to keep going or oh, one of the many things that I use to inspire myself with. Ash has done that with that, uh, but, I'm guessing. Do you want to see what yeah. I'm going to fry? Do you want to see what I'm going to fry? What's it? My whiteboard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, do you know what? I was speaking to Dan from Job and Not Podcast the other day. He's got a metal bulkhead in his van and he's got a, a magnetic whiteboard with all the pens stuck to it there and he uses it. He's got like a section of it with what stock he's got in his van because he's got screws, bits and bats or whatever. But then he'll plan his week out or whatever on that. And I thought that was a pretty good idea because that should be like a rolling one. Well, what I do is, obviously, I have my whiteboard here. Like I said, I've got two, I've got one there and one there. And then I have like two diaries that I take that into there. So I take this with me, this is my practical one. And then I have each job in a presentation folder with all the jobs gear in there with the programs in and each program under each job, just so I can visualize and stay on top of it. Like you're what? basically doing exactly what I do yeah. uh, it, uh, for, for larger construction sites. I mean, we're, we're half a million pound plus on all yeah. of our projects, um, but you're, you're condensing it down. And the reason why all these large companies generally do work and they have to meet, um, they have to do all the paperwork to meet their um, ISO um, mm. uh, Q and A and all that. You're doing the exact same thing, but you're condensing it down and you're making it work for your local yeah. builder, and you're keeping yourself organised. And it's brilliant because I didn't do th- what I'm doing now. I didn't do when I was by myself. But if I was ever to go by myself now, I would do exactly what I do now, and that's have everything organised: folders, materials, invoices even my health and safety file. I do all of that. I never used to do anything like that. How many builders, how many small builders like me do you know that do have a health and safety policy, that do have an individual mm. set of RAMs, that do have method statements that you have to sign uh, to cover your own ass, that do have scaffold inspections, that do have excavation inspections, that do have, you know, uh, chemical data sheets on every, car, has, has a cost locker. You know, yeah. who has, uh, you know, these things in place? It's, you know, like I said, that uh, when I, I remember working on, uh, when I worked for that company, I won't name them, but, you know, one of the jobs I was, I was assisting running was like £7 million for DEFRA for asset security. It was for, a, you know, securing a utility site. And the level... Like again, you had to go on magic. Yeah, you, uh, you had to you had a meeting with DEFRA once a week to make sure you were meeting all the the you know if if basically there was an amber terror warning, uh, this plat the site would get shut down, and you had to have so many secure, uh, you know, all the surveillance, all the motion detectors, all the SR two SR three fencing that needed to be put in place, the rams, the permits, the Hot work, Every, you name the, like the, the confined space, emergency confined space, the uh, emergency escape plans that you had to have in place before you could even enter. You t- every, the, the amount of things, if you miss one thing, the job gets stopped. Mm. It, it, it gets stopped, simple as that. So like Ash has just said, condensing it down to this level of stuff and the programming and the planning, like... Most builders in, in this town, especially with the current climate now, even bad builders are getting work, even bad builders are busy. Don't get me wrong, they get found out. 
I have that many calls going, you know, we've had a bad build, a company coming out, fix it. And unfortunately, I have to say, no, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't take over someone else's work. Unless you come to us in the beginning and we start finish to end, I wouldn't take over them. But it goes a long way. Like I sit down with the customer, we go through the program together. We go through certain aspects. We go through every timeline. They feel more comfortable because they can go, instead of saying, I wonder what's happening next week, they'll have the program. They'll know what's happening next week. Unless something catastrophic happens, they'll know what's happening in 12 weeks' time when the job's mm. planned to finish. You know, it fills the customer with ease, but it's the same whether you're on a 10 million pound scale or a 50,000 pound scale. The, sa- the same process works for the same thing. Like McDonald's, McDonald's, you watch the founder, they're so successful. They are the biggest company, or the biggest fast food chain in the world because their whole menu is based around five generic, the same ingredients. They can make every meal they've got with the same five ingredients, cost effective, easy to manufacture easy to market and easy to sell. It's, and people know what to expect from them as well. Exactly. If, if, if you just break what you're down, what your company does well, if you break your, what I did, how I start is I break my weaknesses down, I label my weaknesses, what, I'm, what I know what I'm good at, what am I not good at, why am I not good at, why is this happening? And with the, the program's really good because let's say on the program I miss a date or something. So every day I have to tick it off, yeah, done this, done this. I have to go to the parts that I haven't done and then I have to question myself on this board and say, I have to write down here, why didn't that happen? Why didn't I make that target? And then when I write down why I didn't make the target, then I can come up with a bunch of remedies how that doesn't happen again. I never met that because this didn't happen. That didn't happen because he didn't turn up. That didn't happen because I costed that wrong. That was too much. That didn't happen because that wasn't delivered on time. So there was a 12-week lead time when I rang him nine weeks ago. Make sure it doesn't happen again. This is how you build better programs and you become a better uh, manager of things really progression as well is how you progress your company and grow yeah that's it and again back to the point you've got to be willing to learn I, I, mm. I could either identify my weaknesses and strengthen them or just ignore them and just carry on doing what I was doing and I try and do that every day I try and identify a week well not every day now I try not to get too busy I try and identify a weakness at least once a week yeah man and, uh, Rob, I don't know about you. Have you got anything else to add? But no, it's been it's been uh, education. It's been really, yeah, really good. Really. It's been business, uh, pleasure, and uh, growth all in one night, and a bit of lane chat and a bit of messing about, and that's what it's all about. And I can hear more kids having a raw rumble in the other room. Yeah, my, mine started <laughs> earlier <laughs> the night. I'm hoping mine have fallen asleep. I said, you've got to be quiet. You've got to be quiet. My 16 year old said, just watch him for watch him for 40 minutes for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Max is running about three times, poking his head behind the door, and I'm like, yes. <laughs> if you was gonna, if you we we've kind of got a few bricklayers lined up um, to be doing this, Matt. Um, we this so the traditional bricklayer recommended Tommy Paul, who we're gonna get in contact with. To I was do. speaking to Tommy yesterday. Yeah, Tommy's a good kid. We're gonna we're gonna do this with Tommy hopefully soon once we reach out to him. Who would you recommend? For us to interview next, who would you? Who story would you like to hear? Got a great one for you, Sam Whitaker. Sam Whitaker. Okay. Sa- this kid, right? Let me tell you, I love him. I think he's a great kid, purely because the dynamic of of the story. So, your story, my story, Rob's story. You know, we're all gen- not generic. We've all have similar stories in similar places, doing similar things. This kid is the guy that worked with a, 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 a you know a, a decent company, had a good job as a right-hand man with SQ2, realised he wanted to be a bricklayer. He realised, I want to be a bricklayer. I want to learn bricklaying. I want bricklaying as my trade. Uh, so I'm going to go and pursue that. I'm going to become a bricklayer. And this is how I do it. And now he's on the road to get his MVQ2 learning with bricklayers being the sponge, like he FaceTimes me uh, uh, and today FaceTimes me and he'll always have like, you know, I'm stuck here, how do we do this, how do we do that? But it's an interesting point of view to see from the learner's perspective rather than the, all of us giving our experiences, what's the biggest fuck up you made, what's this job you've been on, how have you done that? His perspective is as a green learner. Right, Rob, Sam. <laughs> I, I just think it'd be... I think it'll yeah, be, be good. good. Absolutely, yeah. it's, it's a different point of view. Yeah, because because he he's he's fresh. He's a virgin, pretty much. And he had a good job, mate. He had a good job that yeah. he didn't have to leave. He didn't have to leave that job. 
uh, but he, he did to pursue being a bricklayer. Yeah, Max, yeah, Max from respect, and he's, he's, he's chose the right trade anyway. I said to him, I always say to him, just never focus on numbers and never at the stage you're at, focus on being the best. Focus on being exactly. the best bricklayer you can be. Focus on quality because that's what you'll get known for. No good being known as you lay the most, but you're the roughest one in the, on the site. Because if yeah. numbers if numbers ever didn't play a factor, you know, we get paid more over quality than quantity because it's the clientele that we go to. We want the bespoke work. We want the classier work. You know, it's more pro- well, say more profitable. It's less labour intensive and more and the same profit. Of course. Just taking the time out of your evening. It's been really, really good. I've learned so much and I'll start uh, using some of your tips and tricks like you, you've told us about organisation. Oh, mate, yeah. I, I'm, I'm always willing to learn off everybody. I love listening to, to anything around this. It's 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 educational talk, isn't it? And funny. It is. Because you know, we're, all, we're all being span, in sponges. And what you're saying and what I'm saying and what Rob's saying is, and we, we're, we're absorbing all of it and then we're learning from it. And you learn from building your bent wall. Listen, right, we've all, we've all, made, mistakes. <laughs> we've all made mistakes, all right? Um, what was that? Uh, cavity tray, wind post and window guy. <laughs> That's me. That was me. I, I, I yeah. was known as that on the Barway home site. Yeah, <laughs> I hold my hands up. I, I made a mistake. Luckily, you couldn't see it because it was in the joists. <laughs> oh, so you didn't even take it down? <laughs> Rough ass. <Yeah. laughs> it wasn't a problem. That's not out of mind. Can't see it from my house. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I know. I've never had that mentality. It was the, it wasn't an issue. It was two separate rooms. So you get away with it then, mate. We forgive you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it, guys. I better go and see to my kids now because I can see them looking through. We've got a little hatch window. Yeah. Cheers, Matt. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, no problem, fellas. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Speak to you soon, mate. See Cheers, mate. Been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye bye. I said 45 minutes. <laughs> That's why you're going to go and see James Norton and do it with him. <laughs> yeah. it, do you know who lives? In Castleford. Who lives in the same fucking city as me? Fucking Stu Compton. I was right Does near... It? Yeah, I was right near... He lives in fucking Bolton, which is um, another part of Manchester. Oh, right. He won't fucking answer the phone to any of us. And he won't no. reply to any messages or whatever, but... Uh, what else? Well, thanks to Matt at D5. Uh, I think we all learned a lot about business and productivity in that episode. I don't know about you, Ash, but I think I'll take a lot away from that. Yeah, um, he made some really good points. Um, uh, his experience uh, and knowledge, um, his, his, his passion, his passion mm-hmm. comes right through on that uh, chat, definitely. And he loves a whiteboard. We all know he loves a whiteboard. Yeah, a whiteboard, but he's, he's probably one of the most organised, like, um, you'd call him uh, a one-man builder kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, most organised one of them I've ever met. Yeah, he's paying off for him now. So Definitely. So that Remember, one. apprentices, be a sponge. Be a sponge, listen, don't be Billy Big Balls and, and just listen to who you're working with. You might not like that particular bit, the bricklayer that you're working with, but get the knowledge off them and, and then take it and turn it into... Way, your own twist on everything uh, stay tuned guys because the next bricklayer we've got is the uh, one and only Rob Songer so stay tuned and we'll see you next time thanks a lot see you later mate until later bye bye right. give it a second the more time I give <laughs> do, you, do you want me to not look at you <laughs> oh right hold on <laughs> Hi. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible at this. I can't do serious. Hi, mm. I'm Ash from. <laughs> like somebody came up and pinched your ass then. <laughs> oh, God.